Right all, shall we start the painting now? Um, I forgot to mention on the drawing bit, um, if you're using a pen, if you can make sure it's a waterproof one, so that when you uh, put the colour, the paint on, it doesn't run. Um, right, okay, so for the for the door, it's like a turquoise green door. So I've made up hooker's green, and I've just touched into it a little bit of ultramarine blue. And again, bearing in mind it's just a sketch, so just throw the colour on. Just nice and wet and letting it just flow down. Oops. Just touching some other colour into it there, a bit of yellow ochre. Just got a bit bolder there, let that colour run down. And then I said we'd use salt, so there we go, just dropping some salt crystals, just normal table salt, and that'll create some nice textures as the paint starts to dry. So as this uh, door goes down, it's green, this turquoise green, and then the paint's faded away. So I want to make up a grey colour. So starting with ultramarine, add some crimson to it, then add some yellow ochre and you'll get varying degrees of grey depending on how you balance, balance out those colours. So I just touch that in there, there, some more green there. So keeping that wash going, so working on the bottom edge. Oh, it's quite warm at the bottom, so if I just drop some more yellow ochre into that. That's good. Going to add a bit of warmth to that, so mixing that colour in. And it'll just just liven it up a little bit there. Good. Drop some more salt in at the bottom there. Right. So while that's drying, I'll just make up a dark colour for this area here. So if I start off with ultramarine, and then if I add some burnt sienna to that. Gonna make it a brown dark, so I'm adding more burnt sienna than there is the blue in it. I can come back to it later if it's not right. So just whack that dark colour on there. And then more burnt sienna as it comes down, just liven it up a little bit. That's good. And then I'm going to make, for this masonry, it's quite pink actually, it's like a, it's like a very warm colour, pinky, pinky yellow even. So with the crimson and the yellow ochre, let's just see what happens if I drop that in there. I'm going to have to be careful on that edge because... Oh, 
That's good. I like that. And then across there. Bit of blue. Let's give some shaded areas. That keystone is quite yellow, Ooh, that's green. Just take that off with a dry brush and then just put some more of the yellow in it there. That's good. And just pulling it round. So varying the colours. And then on this side it is a little bit more the yellow one. looking all right that can you see the texture there with the salt so that's what we wanted so we can leave this bit for now and sort of concentrate on the area around which is again it's like a plaster with bits that are missing where you've got like your burnt sienna colors um but it's, it's quite a pinky color so i'll start again I'll, I'll start with the crimson nice big puddle because we've got a big area to mix to cover there haven't we bit of blue in it and a bit of yellow orchid a bit more yellow orchid than that really and then I'm just going to throw that on I'm going to use a bigger brush because I've mixed with a small one but be better with a bigger brush and just see what happens when I put it on the paper. That's all right. So what I want is a wash that's coming down. So I'm keeping it really wet. But I'm going to feed in as I come down. I'm going to feed in other colours. So there's more blue there. And then some burnt sienna there for the brickwork. Burnt sienna around there. So it's keeping this wash going. That bead that we've got allows you to work from top to bottom and keep this. This nice wash going. Just, just dry that up there. And then some more burnt sienna because we've got a bit more brickwork there. So it's still wet. So I can just move it about a little bit. So it's changing a little bit as it comes down. It's a bit bluer on that side. So I just mix that on the paper. That's good. And then it, it does change to Quite a cool plaster work as it comes down to there. Don't forget the salt tone. There we go. And then some more of the burnt sienna colour because we've got this exposed brickwork there which is a really nice feature. It's strange, these sort of dilapidated features in these Mediterranean countries are really attractive and appealing to the eye but 
I think if you had somebody in to do a job and they left it like that, you'd go up the wall, I think. But they're really, really nice to paint. Bit of crimson there. Just change that to a warmer. So I dip some crimson into that just to sort of re-emphasise that brickwork there. Down. And then along the bottom there are some really, really strong little terracotta tiles there. And then it's like a putty grey colour really. Underneath there. Join that together. Okay, that's good for the first the first wash really. So I'll just pause the video while I let that dry and then we'll We'll do the next part. Okay, so that's dry now and I'm going to sort of add some form to different areas around the painting there. So I'm going to start with the door. I'm just going to make that, that green a bit darker and just add as if it's casting a little shadow underneath these little Features there. Just try and not be too careful. Just cast a shadow on that door. That one's a bit set back a little bit there. So that's just the hooker's green with it, the ultramarine added to it. Drop some stronger colour in there. And then there's two quite big gaps in the wood. So I just put a really strong dark in there. So that's the ultramarine blue. Bit of burnt sienna in it. There we go. And then adding some feature to the brickwork, so making that burnt sienna colour a bit stronger. And then with simple strokes like that, getting some of the grey colour. Because that doesn't want to be too warm all the way. There's a bit of plaster work missing right along there and it's really dark in there so I'll just put some extra blue in there. And then the sort of bottom edge of the plaster just drop some more of the blue in.
So rather than doing individual bricks, I think it's better to do sort of an area with the warm colour. And then later I might just put some dark in to, to define the, the individual bricks. So while that's drying, I'm going to go back to this area and just see if I can pick out the, um, the metal, the metal work there. then on this masonry so if you imagine lights coming that way we've got like a darker area to give it some shape so if I so crimson with ultramarine I just put sort of shaded colour just to help it look at three dimensional Bit distracting that, so I'll not put too much colour on there. Just gonna soften this area here because I think it's just a little bit a little bit distracting for your eye away from the centre. So I'm just remixing that colour with a wet brush and just blending it in there a little bit. Same with that one there. I think it's just a bit too bold and it's Pulling your eye a little bit away from the doorway. So I'm just softening it, just adding it into some texture into the wall there. Good, so what I want to do now is try and just pick out these this metal work. So I'm going to use gouache. I thought about using a resist um, masking fluid, but I thought that would be just a bit too fiddly. So I've just got a little bit of gouache on a, on a card. And with a small brush, just a bit of water. Get to the right consistency and then just just little strokes. It doesn't have to be all the way. Just to imagine that the light's catching some of the metal work. You could do it with a knife as well, you could sort of, if you've got a scalpel or a craft knife, you could scratch out this colour. I 
think that that's enough of that there. We'll put that there. Just assessing it now, I think, because again it's only a sketch, so just assessing, I think that'll do actually for what we what we want. Um, quite a lot of little different techniques in that, so hopefully you have fun and enjoy having a go at that one. Let me know how you get on.